How many of you have heard the voice of the Lord in your heart? This is the words that I heard in my heart. Go and embrace Him. Just to give you a context of, of this impression in my heart, this happened when I attended a pastor's convention in Makati many years ago. I attended that convention being a leader and a pastor, but with heaviness in my heart, simply because, you know, as pastors, we're still human beings, and there are some misunderstandings with the leadership, and I have these unsettled issues in my heart. So I was attending the conference. Imagine that I was attending in the conference. I was at the back, seated with some of my colleagues and fellow leaders. In my heart, my overseer was in front, and I have difficulty because I have unsettled issues with him. So that first night, the, the speaker of the convention delivered the message so anointedly that you fe at I was feeling that he was speaking to me directly. And he said, if anyone here among you who has an unsettled issues, I want you to settle it because somehow that will hinder your ministry. And we were, all, we were all asked to stand and my overseer was in front and he said, I want you to approach the person and settle. We're pastors. We can forgive each other. We teach forgiveness. So we were challenged. And I was saying to my heart, I knew this will happen. So I was standing there and I was struggling in my heart and this is what I heard. Go and embrace him. You know, it was not easy for me. I was struggling in my heart. So I said, Lord, why me? Most of the time, we look at ourselves as we are on the right, di ba? Siya ang mali, ako tama. Perspective eh. Siya yung matanda, ako bata, siya dapat ang magpasensya. So I was struggling with God, Lord, it was very clear, go and embrace Him. And all the people were embracing each other, a lot of pastors were already reconciling. And now it's up to me. I heard very clearly, God wants me to forgive or settle. It doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. And after a while of struggling, I saw myself walking at the aisle. We were not asked to go to the front. We were asked to approach the person. Before I reached his point, he turned around. And it was exactly the same time when he turned around. It was the time that I was there. And we hugged each other. We embraced and we wept and we cried. But this is what I've realized. That did you know that God being the omniscient God, He knows the issues of our hearts. And most of the time, our struggle our struggle is not in knowing. I don't say that we don't struggle knowing, but most of the time, the struggle is in doing the will of God. The will of God has been written and revealed in the scripture. This is our guide. This is our basis of it. And sometimes when we read the Bible, we still struggle. Now that we know, it's up to us. This afternoon, I would like to bring you and remind you of a story in the Old Testament, the story of Jonah. How many of you heard the story of Jonah? I found out that this is not a story for kids. This is a story for adults. So the story, of, the story of Jonah is an interesting story simply because we can all relate with him. Although some people would look at it as an allegory that God is, uh, doesn't really happen, there's a meaning to it. Historically, you will find out as you read the book of, of uh, Jonah that even the scholars believed and agreed that this is a historical account of how God works in the lives of a reluctant prophet by the name of Jonah. Now let's read verses 1 to 3 of Jonah, chapter 1. The word of the Lord, from the NIV version, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. The, the writer was outset, he was saying, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And how does the word of God came to the prophets before in, in different ways? And most of the time, they would hear the voice of the Lord speak to them. So the, the words of the Lord came to Jonah and said, go to this great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Jonah, because its wickedness has come up before me. Verse 3, But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying for the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish. And next line is the purpose why he was doing this, to flee from the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of his precious words. If you're taking notes, the title is, Don't Be Like Jonah. The story of Jonah is a lesson like being, when you read it, it's teaching you, do not copy what he's doing. Do not be like this prophet. So let me give you a, a, a bit of geography here of what happens. Where, where was Jonah? Jonah was in Israel. He went to Joppa, one of the ports in Israel. And where was he supposed to go? Nineveh, that is Assyria. But where did he go? He went to Tarsus. Look, the geography here. Look at the... 
the, the distance that he attempted to travel wherein God was telling Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. That's the capital city of Assyria. So go to this great city, great in the sense of its vastness, or in, in, at the same time, great in the sense of great in importance because every person is important to God and he's about to redeem or forgive and, and, and uh, pardon the city because of their wickedness. And so God told Jonah, go to this city. And you will, you will learn today why, in spite of knowing the will of God, it's, he struggled in obeying it for some reasons. So Jonah went to Tarsus instead. And Tarsus can be found in somewhere in Spain. As I go along with the, with the story, I have highlighted some of the key lines in the passage, just to give us an understanding. These are key lines that when you, after this message, when you share the, the story of Jonah, you just underline this and you'll be able to share the story of Jonah and its meaning. So let's go, let's go and see the key lines in the book of Jonah. The first line that I want you to underline is the word of the Lord in verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Wow. What a beautiful like, description of Jonah being a prophet receiving a revelation from God. The revelation told Jonah the, speci the specific place, what he should do, and why. Go to Nineveh, preach against this, because the wickedness of these people has uh, reached me and I am about to judge them. Unless they repent, they will suffer. Now, my question is, <clears throat> how does God speak to us? Although in the Old Testament, the difference between God speaking to them is most of the time, God would speak to them in an audible voice. If you're a prophet, God would hear them speaking as I'm speaking to you or as, as a friend is speaking to you. They would hear God speak to them. Moses was described as speaking to God face to face. But in our time today where the Bible has been completed, God most of the time would speak to us through his words and sometimes he would speak to us through circumstances. Sometimes when he, even we are in our still, uh, in our quiet moment, in our devotion when you open the scripture, God speaks to us. When you close your eyes and you ask the Lord to speak to you, God will impress in our heart just like I had experienced that go and embrace that person. God sp still speaks to us today. And in this situation of Jonah, he learned that God is not only the God of Israel, that God is a universal God, that He cares for the people of Assyria. And later on, you will discover that Jonah struggled simply because the, the very issues in, our, in his heart is being pinpointed by God. Because Jonah has an issue of reaching out to others other than Israel. And if, if you know the history of Israel, how they were in captivity, and one of those neighboring nations who whom God used to, to castigate them was, was Assyria. And then they look at these people as they are, these are our enemies, Lord. And why would you send me there? To preach against it so that, Lord, I know that you will, once they repent, you will forgive them. I don't want them to be spared. Probably in his heart he was saying, no, that's my struggle, Lord. I don't want to go there. But the word of the Lord was so clear. And then let's go to the next line. Interesting, the response of this prophet was this. But Jonah ran away from the Lord. Now, in other, in other versions, in other narrative of, of prophets being called by God, hindi ganyan. Jeremiah will be called, Isaiah will receive a revelation, and Isaiah will obey. But Jonah is different. Siya lang siguro yung propeta sa Old Testament, when he received a revelation, he struggled, and he disobeyed. Deliberately, he ran away from the Lord. Jonah ran away. He went to Joppa. He found a ship. He, pay, he paid for his fare. And he traveled the distance. What was he doing? I found out that Jonah was not only running away from God, he was actually running away from the land of God. He was running away from, not only from God, but really away from the people of God or from the nation of God where maybe Jonah was thinking, if I am going away and ignore God, maybe he would call other prophets because I'm not the only one here in Israel. And I really don't want to listen to God. I would go to a nation where God is not worshipped. I will go to a certain, a far, far away land where God is not worshipped. Then I would not be hearing God. I would go to a place that is not believing you. He went to Tarsus. Unexpected response. Why? Why did Jonah do that? He knew full well in his heart that the desire of God was to forgive and restore Assyria. And he doesn't want that. And here's the point. Being God as omniscient, 
Ang akala lang natin, when God is omniscient, He knows the future, He knows the past, He knows the present. But more than that, God being omniscient, He knows the very issues in our hearts. And sometimes you will find God pointing at that issue in your heart na minsan ayaw mo nang pag-usapan. The deepest issue in our hearts na sometimes we pretend that it's everything is okay, no, nobody knows about that issue and that has been hidden deep, deep in our hearts and only God and you knows about it. And sometimes we don't, want, we don't want to discuss about it, we hide as much as possible and here's God pointing that issue to you. And the, and the reaction that we usually do is to struggle and the struggle and not obey the Lord. I was reading Eugene Peterson's book when it comes to the vocation of a pastor. And he was saying, why, why do we continue to flee from the Lord's presence? And he said something interesting, which I found it relevant in my heart. I don't know if it's relevant to you, but listen to this. The question he posed was, why do we continue to flee from the presence of the Lord? And he answered that. And he said in his book, as he reflected on Jonah, it is because the presence of God is the one place we are sure to be exposed as a pretender. When I read that, I said, it's true. Because again, the issues in our hearts that is so deep, hidden deep in our hearts that nobody knows, only God knows. And sometimes God would point that. Because we are in, when we are in the presence of God, everything is revealed. The reason why we find ourselves leaving the presence of God, because that's the only place where we cannot pretend. We pretend that everything is okay, we smile, but somehow we know there are deep issues in our hearts. Or maybe we are running away from God, what God is telling us to do. How many of us traveled from the Philippines, came to Singapore simply because we're running away from something? Or we're running away from what God called us to do when we were in the Philippines? Or maybe we are avoiding God, and here comes God facing you and you're trying to avoid God. Uh, like today, you come to church, you sit down, and you expect a joyful celebration in the church. And the message of the pastor is like this. And here you are, you're trying to look at me, but you're trying to look at the floor. Because you know that there is something that is unsettled in our hearts. And right now, God is pointing on that. Just like in Jonah's case. One time I was <laughs> in, a face, in the Facebook, and one of my high school friends saw me. And he said, are you Boots you? I said, Yes. <laughs> Rabbi, I'm your classmate in high school. So I was so happy and we were talking and chatting. And then all of a sudden he said, I know you're a pastor. Please pray for me. Sabi ko, why? And he said this. Because I think God is not hearing me. Pray for me, Boots, dahil parang hindi ako napapakinggan. Hindi ako nadidinig ng Diyos. So when I read that, I knew, I knew there's something deep in that statement in his heart, issue, struggle. When I was about to respond, he signed off. Then I heard a voice beside me, the voice of my wife, si Sister Manju. <laughs> and you know, we were over lunch, we were talking, you know, that God can speak to you through your wife and your spouse? Yes. Sometimes you have to listen. Medyo masakit lang ang minsan nandating, you know, kasi very personalized. I was sharing with sister. Narinig niya pala yung usapan namin. Yung, I was sharing with her. And then she said something very, very clear. Which I believe God was speaking to me to speak to my friend. And he, she said, Sister Man said, Baka naman hindi niya narinig si Lord. Most of the time it's true. We're complaining, Lord, I, why are you not listening to me? But actually the other way around. We're not hearing him. And sometimes in our hearts, we're running away. Maybe you are running out, you're not running away physically. Maybe you're ignoring. Maybe we are ignoring God. Alam mo yung dinidead mo si Lord? Yun nandyan siya, hindi mo pinapansin. But you remain to be a Christian. Pero dinidead mo siya. Because you're afraid that He will talk about that issue. The next line. Then the Lord, did you know what Jonah ran away? Akala ni Jonah, ayos ayos na siya, I'm going to Tarsus. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose and the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. What? I said, what, Lord? Can God really do this? Did you actually send a storm? But here, it's very clear. God sent a storm, a great 
wind. How many of you remember the saying, you can run, but you cannot hide? Uh, I think something that Jonah learned here. Biyay siya, papunta Tarsus. You found yourself in Naia. You're going to Singapore because you're running away. I hope that Singapore, God is no longer there. You travel and all of a sudden you're in Singapore and you face all this difficulty and you're saying, oh, oh, God is still running after me. God demonstrated his power and, and control over nature. And interesting, the next line is this. Underline it in your Bible. When God sent the storm and all the, the sailors, Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. So here, when, when the ship was, was threatened to break up, the sailors, what they did, they threw their cargoes to the sea to lighten the ship. And when they were doing that, they saw this person lying down, sleeping, maybe snoring, deep sleep. And they said, who is this man? So they reported to the captain and said, Captain, there's this passenger here who's a sound asleep. Can you deal with him? And the captain came down. And listen, listen to this. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Parang la yung message nung, the same with the instance of Jesus. The other way around lang, it was Jesus sleeping. Lord, don't you care? We're about to drown? And here is the captain is saying to Jonah, Hey buddy, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us and we will not perish. Of course, the, the sailors and the passengers were not believers. They are calling to their different gods. Maybe to the Poseidon, the god of the sea. Or maybe they're calling to their different gods in those days. And they're saying, why don't you call to your god as well? So that we will be spared. Then the sailors said to each other, come, let us cast lots. And the sailors were gathering, let us find out who is in charge, or who is responsible, and who is the culprit in this situation. So they cast, maybe it's like two stones with black and white. If it's both white, then you're the one in problem. If it's black and white, then we have to shuffle again. So each one of them threw the dice. Probably, kung ganun ang idea nila. When it comes to Jonah, maybe Jonah, they were saying, okay, kakagulo sa ship, no? no? They were being threatened to, no, Jonah, it's your turn. And maybe this Jonah was saying, you woke me up, I'm sound asleep, I'm running away from the Lord. He was so interested. He threw the dice and it, it was Jonah. And they said, what have you done? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? And Jonah said, I am a Hebrew. I worship God of heaven and earth and the sea. And they were all terrified because he told them that I was running away from the Lord. And you know what the, the sailor did? They tried to row the boat, the ship, to the shore. But they tried to bring the boat to the shore, to return to the shore. And, and, and it's hopeless because the, the waves and the storm, sabi ng Bible, it was the sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do? Here comes Jonah ignoring God. And the next line is this, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Interesting, no? Jonah was not interested in obeying God. Dapat malasana, Lord, sorry, okay, ako na nga, I'll obey you. No, it's better for me to die. Why don't you just throw me? Throw me to the sea. And everybody was scared. No, 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 we will not do that. Throw me to the sea. Instead, the men tried their best to row the boat to the shore. Until such time, the, the sea was not cooperating. And they said, Lord, forgive us of what we're, going to, what we're trying to do with this man. Alam niyo minsan yung mga taong tumatakbo sa Diyos when we are running away from the Lord, nagmamatigas pa. Have you seen people who are like that? Who are disobedient and they're stubborn and they're really, they, they don't care. Di ba? Sige na nga, magkahirap-hirap na, pero ako, hindi ako babalik sa Diyos. The pride, most of the time our pride is, <clears throat> is there struggling. Finally, the sailors decided, let us throw Jonah into the sea. And they threw Jonah to the sea. And they said, Lord, forgive us if we're going to do this. You know, when they threw Jonah to the sea, look at, look at the next line. But the Lord, verse 17, the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. Now, I was trying to picture this in my mind. While they were struggling in the boat, they were being tossed to and fro by the waves, throwing the cargo to the sea and casting lots and trying to find solution. And Jonah is saying, hey guys, don't bother to throw all this cargo. Just throw me to the sea. I want to die rather than obeying God. 
And finally, they told Jonah. And all the while, while the ship was being tossed to and by the waves, can you imagine the Lord, sabi ng NLT, the New Living Translation, God arranged a fish. Ang galing, ano? May inarrange, you know? May pa- appointment. <laughs> May natawag ka. Pwede mang na-arrange. Can you imagine? I can imagine the fish is tagging along with the boat ready anytime Jonah will be thrown out of the boat. Hey, I can imagine. When I was reading this, I was saying, this is really interesting. Kung gagawa natin ng pelikula to, maganda eh, no? The, 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 the fish, I don't know what kind of fish is that, was tagging along with the boat, ready to catch Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. For me, this is grace. That in the midst of our rebellion, in the midst of our disobedience, in the midst of our running away, the grace of God is always there. Diba? Nung nag, when we run away from the Lord, bagyo-bagyo ang dumaan ng problema sa buhay natin. And yet, God would send sometimes a great fish to help us. I don't know what kind of uh, solution is that, but He will always provide. He will always be there. Great fish. When He sent a great storm, He sent a great fish. And this has a connection in the life of Jesus. When in the New Testament in Matthew 12, Jesus was asked by the, deci- or the, the, the crowd and the religious leaders, give us a sign was talking about his being the Messiah. And, and Jesus did not give them another sign, but rather pointed them back to Jonah. I will only give you the sign of Jonah. So because it was, this, it was, a, it was a pre-picture of Jesus being in the, in the grave for three days and three nights, and then Jonah will be resurrected, and Jesus Christ will be the sign. And yet people, the problem is unbelief. And in that situation, when we hit rock bottom, we try to come before God and pray. Di ba, pag matindi na ang problema, we, oh, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. And look at Jonah. Inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord. And this is his prayer. Instead of a prayer of lament, it was a prayer of thanksgiving. Because God was saving him. And in, in my distress, chapter 2, verse 1, in my distress, I called to the Lord and He answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help and you listened to my cry. Of course, Jonah wrote this after he was delivered. And it's interesting, he hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the sea, and the currents swirled about me, all the waves and breakers swept over me, and I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again to your, towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me, seaweed was wrapped around my head. Huh? Talaga nga, you know? He was under the, in the belly of the fish. Minsan, pag dumating tayo sa talagang, when we hit rock bottom, that's the only time we, we return to God. Wag na natin hintayin na dumating tayo dun sa sukdulan. We can't do anything without God. But minsan sa katigasan ng ulo na, when we run away and we're so stubborn, we still wait until we reach that rock bottom. Then we cry for help. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord. And my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Verse 8, those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But I, with the song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. He realized. He came to his senses and realized his offense and his rebellion. Pero minsan yung ganun, ang tao, out of convenience, you know? We call upon the Lord dahil wala na tayong matawagan. But is that really the cry of our heart? Sometimes I question myself, even my salvation is out of my selfish. The reason why I cry to God, because I am in need. But most of the time when we find ourselves in plenty, we don't cry to God or for God's help. Because we're okay. Sometimes we have to check our hearts. Sometimes, kaya ako lang ba ito ginagawa dahil may kailangan ako sa Diyos? And here comes Jonah trying, Lord, you're my salvation. Salvation comes from you. Buti na lang ang Diyos, pasensyoso, eh, no? Alam mo naman yan dati, and yet you run away from me. What are you trying to prove, Jonah? Verse 10, the next line, and the Lord, this is the last line, and the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah unto dry land. Ganda nga ng kwento, eh, no? Parang fiction, eh, pero totoo, eh. Three days and three nights. I don't know where's the fish, where the fish was going. God was dealing with Jonah and the deepest issues in his heart. And when God saw that Jonah was ready, he commanded the fish. He arranged the fish and he commanded the fish. Now the irony here is this. The captain, the sailor, the fish, 
they are all obedient to God except for his prophet Jonah. Sometimes those that are non-believers are more obedient to God than us. Sometimes, sometimes. Or most of the time. <laughs> and then we, we laugh. But again, the struggle is we know the will of God sometimes and we know it's very clear and then we yet, maybe Lord, not yet time for me. Or maybe we ignore God and you, you hear God, God's voice talking to you and you just turn your back hoping that God would deal with you or forgive you or forgive us or spare us. What can we learn from the story of Jonah? I'll cut the story here and continue next time. What can we learn? Basic and yet very true. Knowing the will of God is one thing. Obeying it is a different story. We say we hear, our, we hear ourselves, only if I know the will of God, it will be easier for me. Mm, not true. Because the struggle most of the time is in obeying it. No wonder James was saying, it's not the hearers of the word. It's the doers. It is when we apply the word of God in our hearts. It is when we obey. It's painful most of the time, but God is pleased. Hearing God's word Sunday after Sunday in this church is good. But that is not the one that pleases God. The one that pleases God is when we stand up and say, Lord, I heard you today. I will do it. No matter how painful it is. And brothers and sisters, the will of God is not easy. Because it's most of the time against our very nature. And He deals with the very issues of our lives. Do you think the cross was easy? That's the will of God. No. No. Because it's involved dying to self. That's why we, the dying to self is necessary for us to obey. Because ourselves most of the time will, will come between the will of God and, our, the will of God and he will, that ourselves will come in between. And some, most of the time our, our own will is the one that, that, that gets our attention. You see, disobedience, listen to this very carefully. Disobedience to the will of God does not only hurt us. What's painful is sometimes, or most of the time, it hurts the people around us. Sometimes our families are affected because of our disobedience. Listen very carefully. When we disobey God, we're not the only one affected. Sometimes people around us suffer because of our stubbornness. Kawawa minsan ng pamilya dahil sa kamali ng isa, damay pati anak, damay pati asawa. Damay. Nadadamay sa kamalian, you know? Minsan ganun eh. And, and maybe God will not deal with us directly, even our family, but because the responsibility. Kumusta, mga kapatid? Kumusta tayo? What is God asking us to do? Remember I told you a while ago, God is omniscient, not only referring to He knows the future, the past, and the present. Being omniscient, He knows the real issue in our hearts. He knows the deep issues in our hearts. Most of the time, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, na nakatago dyan, un unsettled, and we don't want to talk about it. And here comes God trying to point that and say, I want to heal you, and I want to deliver you, and I want to set you free. And I want to settle that issue. Settle it with me. And here we are, we're trying to give him a deaf ear or ignore God. We may we not be running away physically like Jonah, but we can be in the church and ignore God and only choose which one I will obey. When I took that step and embraced that person, it was not easy, but there was healing in my heart. The ministry became enjoyable and effective because there's nothing there. You, you know, you can come before God and no issues in your heart. You remember why we almost, most of the time flee from the presence of God because we don't want to be in the presence of God where we cannot pretend, where everything is laid bare and God can point issues in our hearts. And I believe here, he was trying to point something to Jonah. More than anything else, he was dealing with this prophet. And finally, each and every one of us, there is a Jonah there. Let us be watchful. Let us not be like Jonah who in spite of knowing God's word, God's will chose not to obey who does not really care for others or even concern about God's will. Let us rather be like Christ, who in spite of his disobedient and rebellious servants, still is gracious and compassionate to people. And God who really cares and concerned for the welfare, not only of Israel, 
but even the whole world in spite of the cross Jesus obeyed the Father don't be like Jonah let us be like Christ who is obedient to the Father even when the will of God is difficult and 